night here, Ango Sports, Lisa Stoya, meet the coach, meet the school. Thank you so much for being a part of this with us today. Pleasure to have you on. I, I appreciate you having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Great. So a lot to get into with you, right? Hometown girl, New York girl, Long Island girl, some pretty impressive uh, playing career, now coaching as well, some uh, some big victories, some some big seasons you guys have had over there at West Virginia. So tell us a little bit. Let's get into it right away. Tell us a little bit about who you are uh, growing up as a player, influences, players you played against, players you played with, those things that developed you into, into the person you are as a player. Yeah, no, for sure. I, you know, for me, I think initially from the beginning, um, what kind of molded me from the early years was my family. So you know, I had a very strong foundation coming from an athletic family. Back in the time when my parents were growing up, obviously sports were way different, but they made the most of the accessibility to the, to just whatever sports they had. Um, so they kind of ingrained it in us and they wanted to keep us busy. So I have two older brothers, Cosmo and Richie, who also were multi-sport athletes that, you know, and me being the only girl in the family and having two older big brothers, you know, meant that you were going to have to fight for a lot. But, you know, I kind of got some leeway here and there with some things, you know, it's, you know, they never made it easy, but the best things, my parents never made it easy either. So if I ever chose to go out playing with the boys, and if I ever decided to come in crying and try to get my way, my mom told me that if I want to play with the boys, that you don't ever come in crying. So that to me was learned from a very early start. So I kind of had no choice but to, you know, really be ingrained with the competitive side and try to fight my way through things from the start. So early on, I would definitely attribute my, the mold of who I was as a like my characteristics, my mentality, my competitiveness, I think all stemmed from my family because I had to fight for everything, but it was all obviously good. It was good learning curves and stuff to see, you know, and having two older brothers to kind of push you through that, that gate. So, um, and then as my career transitioned, I actually played on a um, you know, I started off in a, in a small club in, in Shirley and, you know, nobody wanted to pick the girl. So I think I was the only girl out of all these boys signing up for the Mastic Sports Club at the time, the association. So, um, there was one coach, Carol Hennigan, who actually was like, I'll take her, you know? So she took me on and then I kind of grew into a phase where I ended up playing with a boys club team up until ninth grade. So, Again, I think by by that point, you know, transitioning to a playing with the boys, which is rare, I think, these days, because I do think the establishments of club teams in Long Island are way different than they were back then. Um, so for me, I actually attribute a lot of the success and the, then now, you know, I had the early molding of building so many things, but then playing with boys, I think, learned for me, I had to learn a quicker side to the game. I think the reaction time um, as I continue to grow, because every year, that I started playing with boys since I was probably, you know, about, I mean, I started around three years old and then obviously I continued. And then eventually when I got to a boys travel team, I mean, that starts as early as I can't remember nine, maybe. So I played until ninth grade with that. And that helped me really kind of change a little bit and still continue a different side of the game. Um, and then from there, you know, I eventually I had to try out for ODP teams, which, the Olympic development programs then were a little bit different where that's kind of, we still have, I think that system here, but it's definitely a little bit more watered down. Um, but it's still a great system for people who don't have the opportunity to maybe participate in other club teams too, as well or whatnot. But, um, but for me, that kind of opened the door to um, creating a network um, by playing with certain teammates from the ODP, the New York state ODP t uh, uh, team that I was on. And then that's actually what led me to, at some point, you can't play with the boys forever. So I, I think in the ninth grade, that's where meeting uh, teammates that I played with for from New York State, that's where I got introduced to the New York, um, New High Park Lady Bengals, which is um, where Marty Herney was obviously the coach of that team. So, mm -hmm. um, so that started around ninth grade. And, you know, for me, I actually started off as a guest player. We, I went to a, a tournament with them in Arizona. Um, and from there we kind of developed and created a great team and I can't, I, I stink. I don't know how many, how many state championships we won, but we won enough. Um, and Marty might know that answer. Um, but we definitely won a good bit of state championships, but you know, I think Marty at that point started becoming a different role model too, as well for me. So it started really with my family 
And then obviously transitioned to having Marty where now I was in a different type of setting. It was Marty introduced us to fitness. If you ask us a lot about, if you ask all my teammates, they'll tell you the one thing Marty did is, you know, he was into that fitness side too. So uh, fortunately and thankfully I enjoyed fitness where not many people do. I'm probably that rare 1% that enjoys fitness. I think it's crazy. I should not admit that, but sometimes I have to. Um, so I kind of embraced that, but I, I really like the the side to Marty where it wasn't about just, you know, what I, what I appreciate the most about Marty as my club coach too, as well. And playing with that team was our team was definitely, uh, I mean, you have various levels of players, um, but everybody was committed and I love that, you know, everybody was committed. We all enjoyed playing with each other. And he really ingrained, you know, not only just being a good soccer player, but tying in some fitness with it. And I think that really helped our, um, our club team, his, the culture of what he brought. I mean, he was competitive himself at the time. He was still hopping in and playing. And we would obviously love that because that's where you want to take the ball off Marty. Um, at the time, he might have had some knee issues, so that might have worked out for our advantage. Um, you know, but I think having somebody that pushes you every day, but also gives you some room. You know, it wasn't an enforcer that, you know, took away things that you were good at. But I think, you know, he elaborated in, you know, taking your strengths and adding it to a team culture, you know? So for us, I mean, I, I still keep in touch with more than half of my teammates. We always talk about doing a reunion. Yeah. We always talk about doing a reunion with the lady Bengals, but um, our logo was dream it, believe it, achieve it. So you can ask Marty about that one, but that was something we had. And, um, you know, and, and I'm, like I said, I'm constantly keeping in touch with my teammates because those, those are relationships you built to as well. So for us, like it was, the reason why we won state championships wasn't because, you know, and, and, and advanced the regionals eventually won the regionals and that fell short in the finals. But, um, you can still remember those days clearly, like it was just yesterday, but I think the people alongside of you really can impact your career. And, and I'd like to say that Marty actually was a big part of that because he kind of really guided you and didn't force you into any type of situation that was, um, you know, you should go and do this, you should do this or go here. You know, he really just kind of, you know, balanced you out a little bit and just kind of made you a different type of player too. Um, and yeah, then Marty obviously- is, uh, Mar Marty's somebody obviously I can kind of tribute to well, right? We spoke about that before we got on this call. Uh, yeah. Him and his brother played a big role with me as well. Uh, right. Growing up, kind of, uh, looking after me, uh, yeah. those pickup games on the field and whatnot. So they were uh, amazing people. That time you were playing as youth as well. Long Island had huge cycles of players, right? Huge right. quality of players on the on the female side. Yeah. So from from there, you had to make a decision, right? You went, decided to go to university. Yep. And tell us a little bit why you chose, and what was right. important to you, and and that time while you were you were there in the university both on and off the field yeah no sure so for me I think by you know participating on those club teams and being exposed what allowed me to be exposed to was a lot of college coaches so by joining that travel team so for us you know it was I was very blessed and very fortunate and, and being honest I had a file cabinet of choices of schools um, from all over the place. And, and honestly, I was very thankful and blessed for that because I definitely had the opportunity to go to almost any place I wanted to in the country. I chose West Virginia because the most key, the, the two or three of the biggest key reasons was instead of going to a program that had already won a national championship or championships, West Virginia was kind of an up and coming program at the time. It was established in like 1995 and then 1996 was the first season. So the, the coach at the time who started this program and is still here today is Nikki Ozo Brown. And the one thing that stuck out to me a little bit more in the recruiting process with Nikki when we would have conversations is she really talked about player development, you know, and I really, I really respected that because to me, I kind of looked at that as something a little bit different because that's what your ultimate goal is, is to keep developing. You know, and her 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 biggest object, objective was, you know, to maximize players' potentials. And I really like that. And then you just kind of have that feel, that fit, like where you feel like it's just right. So by the time I went and I took my official visit back in the time where you took your official visit, visits, that's coming back a little <laughs> bit more now. But back at that time, you, you were allowed five visits as you are now. Um, and it was my first official visit. And, and it ended up being my first my only and my last 
So I took one visit. It happens a lot like that, right? So many, yeah. right? You it, you go, you you feel a connection, and that's and it. That was that's it. awesome. And, and yeah. I wanted to. So one, the development side, I I did want to be close. I am. I have a close family, so I did want their distance to be where my my mom won't fly, so she won't ever get on a plane come see me. My dad would, but my mom wouldn't. Um, so I wanted to somewhat keep realistic distance that my parents could still travel to. So location did matter a little bit. Um, so that helped me to like, get rid of, you know, certain, certain ranges of schools. Um, but then at the same time, I actually wanted to go help build the program. So I wanted to be a player who can come in make an impact mm -hmm. and build a program. And if you look back to the history in 2000, which was my freshman year from that year forward is when we started making the biggest history marks you know at that time and it was only five years when i my freshman year in 2000 was only the fifth year of the program so to me wow. those things really truly yeah made a difference so great so you played all four years west virginia correct right yeah. as a midfielder uh, right as a midfielder some big seasons there for you and then you had, you took a decision after after those four years Tell us a little bit about why coaching, how coaching came about, um, and those responsibilities you have now. Uh, yeah, yeah. For school. me, at the time, the my senior year, well, my senior year, prior to my senior year, actually, the WUSA was the first women's professional league that was out. So I had went and trained with uh, Carolina Carters for a week, um, which Jay Antlick was coaching at the time, and then Mark Ricorian was coaching Philadelphia. So I actually went and spent a summer. I went, I took a week in Carolina and then a, a month training with Philadelphia. Um, and Carly Lloyd, who is somebody that I would call a friend to as well, but we grew up playing together with the ODP team and stuff. So sure. myself, one of my teammates, Carly Lloyd, um, she obviously was one of the players that we would, that, that we were at the time in college. So you, at the time there was a rule, you can invite um players from college to come and train with the pros over the summer. So myself, my teammate, uh, Chrissy Abbott, and then Carly Lloyd were three players that went and trained there. Um, so that was great because that was actually your hope of like almost training because obviously there was interest in you as a player for the draft. Well, unfortunately my senior year is when the Wooster folded. So right after that, the Wooster folded. So my opportunity right out of college was a little bit different. I think if the league was still around, my future and career might have been different because I probably would have continued playing for a very long time, similar where Carly's playing right now, because um, we're, like, we're the same age. So, you know, for me, my my choices and decisions could have been affected differently. So because that folded, the league also the opportunity to play overseas professionally didn't exist to what it is today. Like we have two former players playing with Lyon and PSG. I mean, those are big time or, you know, Liverpool wow. and Chelsea's, yeah. you know, so those are the big, you know, now that's become so much bigger and it's grown. So at the time though, we didn't have that. So I decided to do grad school. And, and so I took a grad assistant job at Jacksonville university in Florida, got into coaching, but I actually started and decided to get into college coaching because of my career and the impact that Nikki had on me playing in college. And for me, so Nikki ended up ultimately becoming, you know, a mentor, not just on the field, but off the field. Like she was a true players coach. Um, you know, she, she knew how to push you to your ultimate level. And when she kind of gave me her script of player development and maximizes potential, she held true to those words in the recruiting process, you know, her focus and her player development and her aspiration to develop players and see you succeed was incredible. So for me, having that experience, you know, was like, you know what, you know, I probably college coaching, I, I went to school for sport management and communications. I got my master's in business. I did my MBA. I want to own my own gym. I love fitness. I want to get into some type of, some type of sports business. And let alone did I ever think I'd get into college coaching was probably the last thing on my mind. Um, but the impact she had, you know, I felt that why not give it back to future generations you know, and potentially be able to have the same impact on other kids coming through that she had on me. Um, and it just happened to work out that a position opened that I fell back at my alma mater and obviously haven't left since. Wow. What yeah. a story. That's amazing. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about West Virginia, right? What is yeah. it that the type of player that you guys are looking for? Tell us a little bit about the student, the person, what, what makes a, a player a attractive to West Virginia? 
I mean, there's a lot of things that go into it. Um, I think for us, we look all around, you know, I, I think anybody can pick out, you know, in a pool of kids, the most talented kid, but you know, what kind of characteristics do they have? Do they work hard? Do they have good, you know, we like to get kids on campus like that to us. We don't just want to have a communication process line over the phone or zoom nowadays and stuff. We want to make sure these kids are getting to campus at some point so that we can um, really get to know them as people, you know, because we, we've created a family culture here. So we're going to try to find kids that are going to fit into the mold of what our, um, what our goals are, what our team, um, you know, what, what we strive for every day and winning championships. We've created a championship mentality here. Um, I think if you were to look up and see all the success that we've had um, over the years, I think you could see some of the development of the players that we have that have played on national teams, but been in the Olympics, been in the World Cups. Um, you know, so we're developing a high level athlete here, but we also want to make sure we're developing good people. Um, and that's important to us. Now, when you go into positions, I think every position has a different characteristics from keepers to the defenders, to the midfield line, to your forwards. So depending on what you're losing in the years before, you know, that really is going to pan out to what we look for to as well. But I think, you know, for us, we look at different characteristics for every position. So like if you're a defender, you got to have one good one v one defending, um, you know, form potentially too as well. You got to be aggressive. You got to be tenacious, probably versatile in some ways too as well. But, you know, the modern game, you got to get forward and get back, um, especially on the flanks, you know, and then obviously people who are comfortable with the ball too. We don't just want to kick it, you know, mid middies, obviously that's where I'm a little more biased because that was my position. So I think you have to be perfect in a lot of areas sometimes. Um, but I think just having a vision and the culture of you as a player has to be very um, diverse in so many ways because you really are the backbone to the team. And obviously you want some fierce forwards who are not afraid to get after the net too as well. Um, but there's a lot of things tied in. It just depends on the position. So wrapping things up, if you had to give one piece of advice, right, something to, to the next local girl coming out of here, the next player, the next person, what, what would be that piece of advice that you would want to give um, that could help somebody along the way with, with this process, the next step, the next goal? Yeah. Like it's, very, it's very easy. For me, I would say dare to be different because for me, it's, that explains everything. That explains you training yourself to, to hit the uncomfortable zones, being comfortable in the uncomfortable area. You know? And, and if, if you're choosing to be different, then you're probably going to choose to separate yourself some way or another, you know, sometimes, you know, by, it's not always cool to have to, to want to do an extra workout and get those players to come do that with you or do extra touches. You know, I think if we all watch the Michael Jordan, you know, um, episodes, you can see where I, why elite athletes get to where they are. Now, not everybody's going to get there, you know, and so many pe people put in hours, but unfortunately sometimes maybe they lack something else. You know, but no matter what it is in life, if you dare to be different, you know, whether that's being a pro and what your future career might be um, of some other sort, then I think you'll find ways to always be pushing yourself. Because um, at the end of the day, the only person that can hold you back is yourself. So if um, if you're trying to be different and not like the ordinary people around you, then obviously you'll you'll start separating yourself and finding success, success along with it. So I love it. That's fantastic. Lisa, thank you so much for your time. It's Anytime. been a pleasure. Um, big thanks to Marty Herney and Timmy Herney, right? Yep. Important people in, uh, in my life as well. And for uh, sure. I wish you the best and wish, wish uh, the team the best for this upcoming season. Same to you. I appreciate it. Thanks again for everything. Thank you. Thank you.